The company also makes mud guards. These are fabricated the same way as the preceding mats. After having been cooled in water, but while they're still warm, they remove the surplus rubber. This operation is called notching. Hard rubber rings are also produced at this facility with the same fabrication methods and, as always, from old used tires. Over a 12-hour period, this facility makes no less than 12,000 rubber mats from old recycled tires. This translates into good news for our environment. This household item is something you might take for granted. But can you imagine life without it? The toilet, a shiny, sculpted marvel of manufacturing. The first public restrooms appeared in ancient Rome when the emperor Vespasian built latrines. Such public urinals became widely known as Vespasiennes by 1840. In 1775, the invention of a water flush system created toilets somewhat resembling today's convenience. The valve and siphon were added in 1784 and the septic tank in 1896. A toilet is an everyday object whose fabrication requires several days of work. It involves assembling several molds, called tools. Each new product requires the design of a master plaster mold, from which they will produce a plastic tool. This latter will be used to create plaster duplicates used as production molds. The plaster production mold of a toilet is made from six different tools which have to be assembled. Their lifespan is only two months. The process begins with a mixture of water and plaster according to a precise recipe. Then the liquid is poured into this filling hole of the tool. Once the plaster hardens, they can proceed with unmolding. They strike the end at the junction of the plaster mold and the tool with a rubber hammer so as not to damage the plaster. The pieces are gently assembled. The toilet softly takes its shape. It's in this same mold that they will later color the clay. Then they install tensioning straps. Little blocks are inserted between the mold and the strap to increase the tension. The mold will soon be filled with liquid and they thus prevent any distortion. Here a new recipe is being prepared. This time it's a slurry, a composite of clay and silica. This preparation is spread out over 48 hours. Now they install the core, the upper part of the mold. They can now proceed with the filling. This copper distribution pipe connected to the tank containing the slurry permits the filling of several molds at a time. They need about 20 kilos of the mix per bowl mold. After an hour, the slurry has attained a thickness of one centimeter. The plug is pulled to allow the excess slurry to run out. They can now unmold the still fragile piece. This thicker slurry is used to adhere the two pieces together. They cut the holes and unmold the ensemble. The toilet is now molded. Then, to obtain a perfect appearance, they remove the little fillet formed by the surplus adhesive slurry. The toilets air dry for 36 hours, then in a warm air dryer for 12 hours. Finishing must be impeccable. They carefully sand the surface to make it perfectly smooth. A vacuum draws up the dust. 
Then with a jet of compressed air, dust and debris are blown away. Bowls are hand-painted in a special room. As for the water tanks, they're painted by an automated robot. This truck carries the different parts to the final fabrication stage, baking. The toilets remain in this oven at the very high temperature of 1,176 degrees centigrade for 23 hours. It takes this long to fuse the clay and silica. The paint then becomes hard and shiny, and it's all done. The toilets in the different bowls now take on shapes more elegant than in the past, but the fabrication of each one of them will have the same basic construction steps involving 20 kilos of slurry and almost four days of labor. If a picture's worth a thousand words, I hope what you saw today speaks for itself. Our goal was to take you behind the scenes to the world of manufacturing. I'm Mark Tewksbury. See you next time on How It's Made.